What is going on guys? Jack here and welcome to episode 6 of the LAN project here in Football Manager 2019 and today we take on Ards for our first chance at silverware here at the club. It's the County Antrim Shield. It's actually a competition that our board do care about. When I asked you guys in the comment section of episode two, you know, should I care about this competition? Um, you guys said it's probably the third most important one. So we are here in the final. We have to live commentate it. Since you were last here, four games have been played. I'm going to go through these quite quickly because we've made a number of signings. We've made a number of signings based off Kenny Bruce, our chairman, going... Here's £1.5 million to spend, and, well, very generous of him. I've gone out there and I've signed some very exciting 17-year-olds playing in various British under, well, under-19 sides uh, at national level. So kind of exciting stuff. But since we were last here, just to go through these games, we took on Queen's University Belfast first. A 2-1 win with a rotated side was pretty nice. We followed that up with a win against Holland and Wolf Welders. 6-3 this game finish, a bit of a mad one. Chris Eagles had a superb game, to be honest. He got a goal and two assists. Thomas Stewart and McDade grabbing braces for each of them. And also McLeany grabbing a goal in the 19th minute. It was a little bit of a shame to concede free, but you can see looking at the stats, we were dominant throughout. We uh, really, really were very impressive in this game. The next match we had was against Knock Breda in the league again. And, uh, well, they were bottom of the league. I rotated the team a lot, and we came out 3-1 victors. You can see here, McAlevey, uh, one of the players who grabbed a goal for us. This guy, I don't think I've ever talked about him. Um, at the start of the year, we were lacking any centre attacking mids whatsoever. Obviously, we signed Chris Eagles. I decided I needed a backup. This guy was the backup I brought in. Of course, we signed Mandanda last episode. We do also have a new centre mid slash centre attacking mid who we've signed. You guys may know who it is if you watched last episode. But, um, as a result, this guy probably isn't going to play that much football for us. But he was kind of a bit of a stopgap option for us. He's not a bad player by any means, but he's just kind of eclipsed by the other players we have. And obviously, Idris Kaded, um looking very, very exciting indeed. Still only got one determination, which is a teeny bit of a concern if I'm being honest. But you can see elsewhere in his game, he is improving, which is very, very good indeed. In our most recent game, we took on Linfield. I will show the highlights for this game. Of course, Linfield, one of the Premiership big dogs. And to be honest, we were on the back foot for massive spells in this game. They had a lot of clear-cut chances, particularly in the first half. We rode our look a little bit before Thomas Stewart put us ahead. They then had a straight red card for Robert Garrett in the 42nd minute. And, uh, well, to be honest, they were still a little threatening on our goal. We held on, and in the end, Thomas Stewart grabbed his second of the game in the 83rd minute of the Northern Irish League Cup quarterfinal. And with that, we move on to the semi-final, which if we actually look at here... You can see, in other games, Porter Down in the Championship are in the semi-finals. Dundella, who are also in the Championship, have gone into the semi-finals. There is only going to be one Premiership team out of the last four teams remaining, and it's going to be Ballymena United or Warren Point. So, worth keeping an eye on that. That's a little bit of a storyline emerging there. There is going to be an underdog more than likely winning this competition. I'd like to think it might be able to be us. Anyway, since you were last here, we had a massive investment from the chairman. You can see our transfer budget... Original budget was 1.2 million. Our wage budget is huge. I rejigged the wage budget because we were given 1.4 million pounds to spend, and I was like, I'm never going to be able to spend that in a million years. You can see here, if we look at uh, income for this month, I think it was this month. Oh, actually, it was last month. You can see 1.5 million pounds just casually thrown into the club. Of course, we are owned by a sugar daddy. Whilst we are going to get money like this because of the signing restrictions that we're under, we're not really ever going to spend that much of it. But as soon as we did have 1.5 million pounds, and because I had been scouting, um, you know, the various young um, kind of national teams, the under 21s, the under 19s of British leagues. I thought it was worth just seeing who we could maybe pick up. We have signed a few players, and I think most of these players I've actually kind of highlighted in previous episodes as players I'd really like to sign. There are four who have immediately joined us, two who have joined us and will go back on loan. It might be easier actually to look at them under the transfer history down at the bottom here. Um, so yeah, we have made, as you can see here, a number of signings. A few of these are very much longer term signings. In terms of those in the first team, Kevin McGrath is definitely one who I have talked about before. Uh, I really like this guy. He plays for Ballymena United. He's on £5,000 a week, uh, or rather, he, we, we brought him in for £5,000. He's on £750 a week. Not a small earner by any means, but he is capped under 19 level for Northern Ireland. I really like the look of this guy. I'm actually retraining him to play ball-playing centre-back. His heading isn't the best, but with the exception of that, 
for a player who's only 17 years old, I feel like he's got so much potential in this role. You know, he's not the most mobile of centre midfielders, really. Not the best going forward either, with only six dribbling, five finishing. I think as a centre-back, that is where his future lies. So that's what we're going to be training him to do. He will probably make some appearances in the first team, uh, but certainly not in the immediate fu future, I don't think. Another player we signed from Ballymena United was Kieran Kane. Again, a under-19 international for Northern Ireland. For some reason, my game is taking forever to load player profiles today, but we'll just roll with it. Uh, you can see, actually, this guy's capped at under-21 level, so definitely worth being excited by him. He's only 17 years old. Didn't have the greatest season so far at Belly Men United. Doesn't play wing-back yet, so we're going to be training him to play there. Um, currently set as a backup. Obviously, with these players, they're not on the smallest wages, but genuinely speaking, I feel like these players we've signed have the potential to go a long way in the team, and, well, I hope they don't outgrow us. A few Northern Irish players we've signed. We've got Robbie Bassett here, who I'm hoping I can just click on the information to load his stuff so I don't have to click on his whole profile. But we signed him from Dungannon Swifts. Uh, he doesn't have the best current ability, but he's got some real potential about him, which is why we brought him in. And that is a similar story with John Doherty who we signed from Coleraine. Uh, he is a really versatile, actually, attacking midfielder, this guy. can play a variety of different positions, and I really, really like the look of him. You can see just looking technically not the most gifted, but um, just in terms of his physicals, they are very solid. He's only 17 years old. Loads and loads of time to improve. He has only just turned 17 as well. We signed two players from Dergview, one of our divisional rivals, on free transfers. Uh, or, yeah, they were free transfers, actually, because they were only valued at £300. So instead of bidding £500, I offered them nothing and they accepted it, which is a little odd, but, I mean, we're going to... If, if teams don't have the ambition to hold on to the players, we're going to pry them away. So, yes, a double signing. Mark Holmes here, pretty good player, but plays out wide, so we would have to retrain him. And also Sam Brown of Dergview. Very, very good physicals on this guy as a striker. Uh, we've loaned both these players back for 12 months. So they're going to be playing for Dergview for the next year. But they're going to get more regular first team football than they would have otherwise got playing for us. Which I think is a win-win for everyone. Anyway, in terms of the two big boy signings, the two I'm really excited about. The first player we have here, playing for Ballatown formerly, we have Danny Hill here. Uh, I talked about this guy last episode. He wasn't properly scouted. I've taken a bit of a punt on him. I scouted him further. Very talented player low determination a little bit of a concern but we are going to look to mentor him of course I have recently updated our mentoring. You might remember previously it was lots of big groups. I've decided really to divide the mentoring groups down into smaller chunks. Um, hopefully this is going to get us better results over the course, I guess, of the early stages. And, and we'll see a notable difference. Uh, the mentoring just wasn't really working with the bigger units over the first few months. So mixing it up a little bit. We'll see how this works. But you can see uh, there is always a determined or professional player with at least average influence on the group. Uh, kind of assigned to every single group. So yeah, that's, pr that's pretty good if you ask me. Anyway, the last player that we've signed, besides Danny Hill, who I absolutely love, his physicals are superb, I think box-to-box -box midfielder of the future, despite his somewhat lacklustre mentals, is this guy, Oisin. Um, I need a nickname for this guy. I talked about the fact we might need a nickname for him last episode if we were to sign him. It's official. We need one. I do record a little bit ahead with my videos, so as a result, this nickname probably won't come into effect for a couple of episodes. I want to let you guys have a say on it. But yes, brought in for £13.25,000. In the grand scheme of things, that's a massive chunk of money. I mean, if you look at all the signings we've made this year, that is the big boy signing. But, well, with the £1.5 million that we had invested, we've still got room to kind of flex around. Um, I feel like with these players, they are players who can definitely offer something immediately, but I'm not in a rush to rush them into the first team. You can see a few of them on international duty, as is Brandon Oddi and Severio. Um, so, as a result, you know, they're not going to be able to play today. Obviously, McGrath and Kane formerly of Ballymena, uh, both were cup-tied, so they can't play today. So it does help me a little bit with my team selection, because, well, with these youngsters, I do want to give them game time. Um, it's going to be a bit of a rotation, a bit of a juggle that we're doing with our first team, I guess, at this point. But it's nothing that we're not used to at this point. We've been doing that a lot. I mean, when you look at our first team now, it is very large. I'm not even going to pretend it's not. I feel like 30 people uh, for a, well, I was going to say for a team challenging in Europe isn't the biggest kind of number in the world of course long-term aspirations are we want to be in Europe I like to generally have my squad size at about 25 to 28 so we're a little bit over that but of course there's so many youngsters here who are not necessarily playing a whole bunch for us but are very much here to train with the first team to be mentored and uh, well hopefully we're going to reap the long-term benefits of that so anyway, they shift our focus onto the here and now. It's our first ever cup final. A reason to be excited, I feel like. 
And uh, well, let's let's go into our team, shall we? We've got a pretty much full strength team at our disposal. I could bring in Oisin, but I want to stick with the players who have got us this far. In terms of our team, this is what we are going to go with. We're going to go with Devlin in goal. He's been very solid for us so far, the 27-year-old. Uh, this year, you can see a 7.02 average rating in all competitions. Definitely worth applauding. The back three, we're going with the three players who have played the most together. We've got McLaney, the club captain, of course, at right centre-back. Graham Kelly playing that covering defender role. Uh, is going to be playing that centre defend cover role. And, well, to his left, we have Blanchard. Blanchard, a little bit on the decline at 32 years old. He has recently done his coaching badges. I'd love to keep him on after he, you know, decides to hang up his boots. We do have in Oisin a player who I think is probably the natural long-term successor in the left centre-back role. Um, he's not the best ball-playing defender, Oisin, who we've signed. You know, five passing, two for first, uh, two vision. I'd like to improve those, but he is left-footed, professional personality as well. So at left centre-back, he's kind of a natural fit there as Blanchard perhaps starts to fade out of the first team. Anyway, at right-back, we are going to go with Elliot Kebby. Nothing entirely surprising going on there. At left-back, we, of course, go with Tilney, whose determination has dropped off a little bit. I don't like the look of that. Hopefully, that can resolve itself soon. In the centre of the midfield, we're going to go with the homegrown hero, Jeff Hughes, of course. Um, he's been doing okay this year. He's not really performed that great in the league or and, well, the Northern Ireland League Cup. But in this competition, an 8.25 average rating so far. More of that today, please, Jeff. Alongside him, we are going to go with Romano Vieira, or Romario Vieira, rather, ahead of Fuad Sul. Uh, Sul, of course, on loan from Barnet. His loan expires in January. So I'm kind of preparing for life without him. I did try to sign him, of course. In, uh, I asked you guys in episode two, should we be able to sign players who used to play for us who are over the ages that are kind of part of the transfer restrictions? The overwhelming response was yes. Unfortunately, despite the money we've been given, Fuad does not want to continue his time here at Lan, at least right now. I'd love to bring him back longer term because I do think he's a very good ball winning midfielder. Anyway, Chris Eagle's going to play the centre attack in mid role uh, with both Danny Hill and Mandanda unavailable for today's game. He is the natural fit in that position. And up top, we are going to go with David McDade and, of course, Thomas Stewart. McDade is fully fit. Thomas Stewart coming back from a little bit of an injury, so worth being aware of that. Um, he is, well, fit, his fitness test was he passed it, but his condition is a little bit lacking at 84%. So we are going to have to be, well, I, uh, I guess having Kaded on standby as a striker to come on if we need him to. Elsewhere on the bench, we've got Alex Evans, Martin Donnelly, Chris Paul and Fuad Sul. Um, a very strong team. Hopefully we can give them a good run for their money. I think we are probably favourites just based off the strength of our squad in general. We've got a very, very kind of full strength starting 11. The starting 11 that's played alongside each other the most throughout this season. Of course, we are playing at Windsor Park today. It's our first time here. I'm hoping that we're going to be able to... Well, to, to do, do what we do best, which is turn up for the big games. I feel like over the course of this season... We have really proven ourselves to be a team capable of performing in the big games against the better teams. Um, so you can see uh, our team has been heavily impacted by international call-ups. Call of course, this is mostly the youth side of things. Doesn't have a massive bearing on us. I think the only first team player would be Brandon Oddie. He's been out for a long time of injury. But uh, at the same time... We're not really missing anyone immediately in the first team. It's, you know, a lot of our backups, players like Severio, players like Oddi, players who it'd be nice to have in the team. Danny Hill as well, I guess you could throw it into that mix. But they're not players that we're super reliant on in the same way we are with others. Which is, we have a chance here. Tilney! It wasn't Tilney at all. It was Graham Kelly with the goal. Three minutes in. I'll tell you what, Chris Eagles delivers balls of quality. He has balls of... Okay, let's not say that too loud. I, I thought Tilney had got there. It wasn't. It was Graham Kelly, which is great to see. Of course, plays that covering defender role for us normally. You can see a few players offside. I think Graham Kelly might have been offside there, but we're not going to complain. Maybe VAR should come to Northern Ireland. Uh, I mean, it hasn't today. We're going to ride our luck. Of course, if you don't know... Offsides and incorrect refereeing decisions do happen in Football Manager. I've seen loads of people complain, why do you need VAR when the ref's always right? He's not always right. What a move this is. Finish that, McDade. Sorry, what a goal that was. Can, can we discuss that? Kebby with the little interplay here. I mean, Chrissy Eagles with a little decoy run. Kebby makes that overlapping run. The little 1-2 is Stuart. McDade arrives at the back post for the tapping. It's his 11th of the season. Six minutes gone. We look really blooming good right now. This this is the kind of game where we perform well. It's our first ever trip to Windsor Park as manager. 
I'm hoping it's not going to be my last trip to Windsor Park in this series. But at the moment, we're making it one to remember. We have been superb in this game. It's, it's got airs of the uh, the Glen Torren game about it, really, hasn't it? Kebby wins the ball here, switches the play to Tilney, fullback to fullback, options in the middle, Stewart's there! We are playing really nice football with this tactic. I mean, we saw it last episode. There was a really nice goal work. This was equally as nice. Kebby, what a switch of play this is by the right back. And well, from there, a really intelligent ball. I thought he was going to go to the near post. He doesn't. He pulls it back towards the penalty spot. Who else is there but Thomas Stewart? It's 3-0. I mean, the dream. The dream is very much alive. Three shots on target, three goals. We've crafted out real opportunities of quality. And we've taken each and every one of them. Stewart's condition of 74% and the fact we're freeing a lot does make me tempted to take him off at half time, which might seem a little mad, but I'd like to protect him for games we've got coming up if I can. As well as we're doing in the league, we have got teams hanging with us, and there is only one automatic promotion spot. I think we're five points clear of the nearest team, but well, let's not get ahead of ourselves here. McAllister, oh my gosh, Devlin, if that had got hit the post and hit him on the back and gone in. I would not have been a happy bunny. As it is, it hits the woodwork. It falls graciously into his hands. Maybe a little bit of a let off. 3 1 at half time certainly wouldn't be as convincing as 3 0. But, despite not dominating the ball as much as we normally do, we've looked pretty solid so far in this game, it has to be said. Boys, I am very happy with how that's going. Maybe I'm inviting complacency on by telling them I'm very happy, but I can't be critical. I can't tell them I expect more. We're 3-0 up against Premiership opposition, and whilst we probably do have the better squad on paper, this level of dominance and this level of football is superb. Eagles hits it. I mean, look at that football. This is football. I'm hoping next year we can challenge for the league in the Premiership, but I might be getting ahead of ourselves here. We don't perform like this against teams in our own division, but it feels like against teams who play more attacking football who expect to demolish us as, you know, a team in the league below them, we really shine... Romario Vieira lays it off. Chris Eagles, lovely little finish from the edge of the box. We are cruising here to the County Antrim Shield final, which is exactly what I wanted to achieve. I mean, at this point, I feel like I'm saying, let's go and win the Irish Cup. Let's get Europa League this year if we can. Kebby, I mean, he's been dominant so far on this right side. Can he whip in a ball of quality? He can. Eagles is there again. Rebound, maybe. It's somehow hacked clear. That was a real opportunity. A nice stop by their keeper. Aren't they still yet to have a shot on target after 54 minutes? It's a little bit embarrassing for them, really. Let's make a change. Let's bring in Cadet for Stewart, because Stewart, not fully fit for today's game, really. Rushed him in a little bit. He's had a good game, but well, we're not desperate to keep him on if we don't need him to. Eagles, another ball of quality, please. Back post. Jeffy Hughes gets in on the action. It's his second goal of the season. He scored the first goal for the club. He's got a goal in the final. 5-0. I mean... I don't know what to say other than, well, well played, boys, I guess. We are set-piece specialists. That deep free kick from Eagles just dinked into the back post. He was not known for his aerial prowess like some of the players in our team, but it was a composed header. It was a header directed with purpose. I mean, can we keep the clean sheet now? That's the question. And, uh, well, luckily for us, are still unable to hit the target. We've been let off the hook good and proper there. Six shot on tar shots on target, five goals. We have been just clinical today. Look at the team performance. That's what you want to see. 24 minutes left. I'd like to hold on to the clean sheet, but at the same time, I wouldn't mind six. Big ball over the top. It's not as sexy as some of our football's been today, but we're going to try and apply pressure high up the pitch, force them to give away the ball. Boyd nods it inside, although Chris Eagles reads the play like a buck. Hughes, though, caught just a little bit, kind of, I guess, slow on the ball there. Just a bit... What's the word? Dawdling. He didn't want to get rid of it. And now they have a chance. Mark Kelly. I mean, he's he's party pooper there, isn't he, really? Getting all hyped up about the possibility of a clean sheet. And then Ke Kelly grabs a goal like that. It all came from, well, a ball from Tommins. Maybe could have applied a little bit of pressure. Tried to stop the cross. Could Devlin have done better? I mean, I can't fault him, can I? He, I mean, he's not saved a single shot today. But he, he hasn't needed to until this point. Uh, 20 minutes left. Let's make a few more changes. Let's bring in Chris Paul for Kebby. Paul is a player who I'm a bit conflicted on because he wants to play more first-team football. I like him a lot, but he does keep getting injured. But I really like him as kind of a flexible option to have on the bench because he just plays so many different positions. We have also got one more sub. I think we'll take off Tilney. We'll bring in Donnelly. 
We'll swap both of our fullbacks out. Obviously, Donnelly, loyal servant to the club. Um, a bit of a, a hometown hero at the moment in real life. Want to give him game time where we can, but Tilney has been so good at fullback. And with us not playing with attacking midfielders, it's difficult sometimes to find a spot for him. So this is as good an opportunity as ever. Was that a shot by Kelly? I really hope it wasn't, but it, it looked a little bit suspiciously like he might have just shot from 30 yards out. Is he just taking the Michael? It feels like he might be. I was expecting a more nervy performance than this. Of course, Linfield, one of the big dogs, we beat 2-0. They did have a sending off in that game. They had more chances than us. I was thinking this game would not be easy. Uh, well, I, has it been easy? I guess it has been easy. There's no other way of looking at it. It's looked comfortable throughout. You know, we scored a few goals early on, and since then we've kind of just been in cruise control. We've just been given a penalty. Do I want McDay to take it? I don't. I want Devlin to take it. Let's let the keeper have a go to score in the final. Why not? Let's just rub salt in the room. Please don't let me down, Devlin. The ginger ninja himself. Can he score it? I mean, he scored in the final. <laughs> I don't know what to say. I like the fact you can change your kick taker in the top left. You can rub salt in the wound. I mean, have you ever seen a goalkeeper score a penalty in a cup final in Football Manager? I didn't think so. I mean, is that that's a bit mean, really, isn't it? Um, if he'd missed, I would have looked like a bit of a mug. As it is, though, 6-1. We want 7. I don't know if we've got 7 this year. Why not go for 7 at Windsor Park? Romario Vieira has forgotten the football exists there, which is not ideal. They're on the attack. Let's not concede a second. Tommins, we have three men trying to stop the cross. They don't stop the cross. Mark Kelly grabs his second. He runs as if they're going to come back into this game. Come on, boys, we can do it. Four goals in a minute and a half. It's not going to happen. I'm sorry, Kelly. But... That's a little bit of a shame. You feel like three players should stop the ball getting in there. We've left a man, well, three at the near post, and they punished us. 6-2. That, that takes the shine off the game just a little bit, conceding two. I'm not going to lie, but I can't complain. 6-2, it's going to finish. Devlin with a goal. We are going to win our first bit of silverware. It's the County Antrim Shield. I'm sure it's not the biggest bit of silverware we're ever going to aspire to win. You know, Ch Champions League would be nice in a few decades' time. But um, at least here and now, it is worth celebrating. It's our first piece of success here at the club. We have dominated this game. You'd have to say they did get into the game as it progressed, but we were so clinical with our chances. And uh, we deserve every little bit of success. The boys are having a party. I've got my green suit on. That's, that's when you know we're having a good time. And, uh, well, yeah, a deserved victory in the end. 6-2. They're predicting us to win, but not to win by four goals. I think that's fair. Ards are a good team. Maybe we're expected to win, but certainly not by that margin. And that is worth praising. What a performance that is again in the big games against the big clubs. A common trend this year. Long may it continue, might I add. We win the County Antrim Shield. I think that's the first time the club's ever won it in the in the club's history. Can we have a look? Let's have let's have a look. Can we we can enjoy the silverware? There you go. It's our first piece. More of that, please, in the coming years. That's got to be the aim. £10,000 invested. We've been praised by the Lawn supporters. The board are happy with the win. I mean, you've got to be happy with the win. Chris Eagles, what a performance by him. Two assists and a goal. More of that, please, Chrissy boy. I mean, who is Mandanda? Do not need him, really. You see, odds were the biggest overachievers, apparently, ahead of us. So maybe we've stopped the Cinderella story in the end. Brandon Oddie gets top goal scorer despite the fact he only played two games in the competition. He's been out for a little while injured. I'm hoping he can come back to full fitness in the near future. Just a few things before we wrap up today's episode. I've not done a player to focus on today in terms of a youngster worth keeping an eye out on. Who, who should that player be? I'll tell you who it should be. It should be Oisin. We need a nickname for him. This guy's going to play first team football this year. Out of all the players we've signed since last episode, he's the player who I think has the ability to make an immediate impact. Obviously played for Finn Harps, played a lot of games last year. I think he's going to slot into our team quite nicely and be quite interchangeable with Blanchard at the left centre-back role. In terms of when we'll be back, um, we've got a few cup games coming up. We've got the Northern Irish Football League Cup semi-final. If we do get drawn against a championship club, I might not cover that game. Instead, I think we'll look slightly further ahead. You know, we've done a lot of games in quick succession. It'd be nice to go, I feel like, for a slightly extended period away. Maybe, you know, towards the Christmas period. Maybe a little bit beyond that. Um, we'll see how things play out. You know, we'll, we'll, we'll kind of take it in our strides. In terms of future signings, not really got my eyes on anyone yet. Of course, if our scouts find anyone on their various assignments, 
then then we'll get a little bit interested, I think, because well, we, we have to, don't we? If we just look here, you can see we've scouted a lot of players here. Lots of players in a big scatterfire approach. Um, obviously, some of these are over the age limits, but uh, Northern Irish or have just aged a little bit as players do in real life but yeah I have been extensively scouting all the leagues there's players here I'd love to tell you know players like John Morris I talked about him before I'm looking at this guy I don't care if he's inconsistent I don't care if he's injury prone I don't care if he's competitive he looks really really good and he's 17 and he's playing for the Northern Irish in the 21s but at least right now he doesn't want to talk with us. We're not big enough to match his ambitions. We will show him in the coming years what our ambitions are. Just one more thing before I go. Uh, I should mention this because I haven't done ever, I don't think, as far as this series goes. Uh, I still only have one year left on my contract. Board, if you want to give me a new contract, we've just won silverware. It would it'd be nice to get one. I can't ask for one at the moment. I'm hoping they're going to come to me after this silverware and go, yeah, we want to keep you on a little bit longer. But, well, worth being aware of that. I mean... Kenny Bruce, if you're watching, I'm available. I'd like a contract. Please talk to my people. <laughs> anyway, guys, let's wrap up this episode from me today. Fantastic win. Absolutely delighted to win the County Antrim Shield. Obviously, I think the Irish Cup is where our focus is lying, looking further forward. In terms of where we are in the league, I don't know if I showed the league. You can see here, two points clear of Dergview with a game in hand, but we're not head and shoulders above them, so we've got to be a little bit wary of that. I can't afford to take things too much for granted just yet. Anyway, guys, that is going to wrap up everything from me today. Hopefully you did enjoy. If you did, smash a like on the video. If you've got any comments, leave them down below. As a reminder, we need a live, uh, well, not a live commentary name. We need a nickname for Oisin. Get them down in the comments. And, well, other than that, it is me, Jack, and I will talk to you guys in a bit. I'm out.